Hello, if you're already watching. <clears throat> I'm trying to show into the groups. Facebook's been a bit slow. And now it's glitching. Alright. <laughs> Let's start from scratch. Refresh the page. How are we all doing? Who's watching? Come say hi. Doing a bit of an experiment today. Right. Let's try again. It's working now. <laughs> I don't know what Facebook was doing. The video was jumping around, wouldn't let me share. Right. There's one group. Hello, Vicky. And yeah, okay, right, cool. Shared into both groups and have the recipe in front of me. Fantastic. Oh, I need scales. I've got some. Uh, tandoori chicken sort of at the back there. I would say marinating but I made it like 10 minutes ago and I'm going to be cooking it straight after this live so it won't really have much time but it's better than nothing. Um, I'm making the cinnamon layer cake today so this is from the OMG book. Um, it's something I made, when did I make this book? Last year, it doesn't feel like last year. It's something I made for this book because I wanted a few more like sweet treat recipes. Um, and it's one of my favourite sort of sponges, sponge recipes. Um, it's just, the, it, I think it started as the Victoria sponge recipe in Creative Bakes, and then it sort of moved on to a couple of different bits, including the cinnamon layer cake. Now, the thing that I'm experimenting with, hi Deb, isn't like anything to do with the actual recipe. It's, I've got these. <laughs> so, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these are from Lidl. Um, I apologise if anyone's going to be mad at me, but we, we got these like silicone moulds, so there, there was another one as well. They did quite a few actually, they did one giant one, like if you're making a full on cake, and then they had obviously the mini sort of chocolate moulds, which are fairly shallow. Hi Sandra! And then they also had these much deeper sort of cake moulds. They came as a tray, but I've just cut it in half so that I can fit it in the Ninja Foodie, because I don't want to have to put on the oven to put a tray of this in and the ninja grill needs cleaning out so i've done this before i've chopped up the silicone mold just to make it fit what we've, we've got so um i'm going to be trying these out and my my goal is they're fairly deep and hopefully the cake has enough structure to um sort of give an imprint um it might not it might fail what i might do is because i've got half you know, I've cut it in half now. I'll leave one out of the fridge, uh, out of the fridge, out of the freezer as normal, and the other one I might freeze to sort of see if I can get a, a better shape. But we'll see, because this this sponge is kind of, uh, I wouldn't say delicate, but it's like, I don't know, quite quite fluffy but dense at the same time. I I can't explain it. You have to make it yourself. Um, the reason why I'm saying that's an experiment is because sometimes silicon doesn't cook cakes very well because it doesn't like conduct heat in the same way. So I do also have a little cake tin that I'll use. This is a pie tin that we use, um, but it's a perfect size for a little mini cake. Um, and I'll use that so that we at least have one thing that looks good. So we'll get started on the cake. There are three parts to this cake mix cinnamon sort of dusting layer and then the granola style topping so a uh, cake mix first i've had the butter out all afternoon and it's not exactly freezing outside it's like 10 degrees but um it's not been the warmest inside today so um i don't know how soft the butter is yeah no, it's going to need to go in the microwave so i need 60 grams of softened butter so it's quite soft, but I need to be able to mix it in with the cream cheese. Um, it doesn't matter if it's kind of melted, just don't make it fully melted. That's all I'd say. So what I'm going to do is chop it up into little pieces and then microwave it really quickly so that it doesn't melt properly. It just warms up. Let's see if I can get this exact. If 
exactly 60. I very rarely do that. Right. So, let's get a lid. Because whenever I don't use a lid, it explodes in the microwave no matter how long it goes in for. And I'm going to microwave it for like 20 seconds. That's the way. So the first step is to, let's say you've got properly softened butter, you don't need to do that microwaving step, you're going to mix it with some cream cheese, I need 100 grams of cream cheese, this is what sort of makes the cake its texture that makes it really nice. Again, I don't know how to describe it. Oh, sorry, about 20 seconds. Oh, that should do. It's definitely not dry, this cake. Alright, half melted half softened that's good enough you don't need to be like really exact with this recipe um let's use that one i need 100 grams of cream cheese or soft cheese whenever i write these recipes i just say soft cream cheese because we always call it cream cheese but actually the labels don't say that philadelphia or equivalent just drop some on the scales Waste that. So I decided to do this recipe today because obviously it's Christmas like this week, which is weird. Um, and it is like a Christmassy recipe. I've put it in the Christmas recipe section, but I'm not gonna lie, these aren't gonna make it to Christmas, and this is not for Christmas. But it would make a nice Christmas dessert. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to make for dessert this year. I think I might make a cheesecake. We've not made we've not had cheesecake in ages. Hi, Karen. I need 30 more grams. Is anyone else planning on making a dessert for Christmas? And what are you making? I need some ideas. Right, there we go. Um, I'm just going to use a spatula. You can use a whisk if you want. I tend to prefer using a spatula for whatever I, I do bake-wise, um, just because a whisk is really annoying to clean out or like get the mix from the middle. I always end up with most of the mix in the middle of the whisk and it never really works. So I'm just using the spatula to sort of combine it. And again, it doesn't matter that the butter was kind of melted because the cream cheese was very cold. So it's kind of giving it the right texture. Looks like buttercream. That's what you're going for. So Deb is making salted caramel cheesecake. Nice. Did that a couple of years ago. That was really good. And I'm just going to do fruit and jelly and cream. Is it just me? Lovely. I do have some jelly in the cupboard, so I could make something with that. I just don't know what. Hi Sue, we're talking Christmas desserts, what to make. All right, cream cheese and butter have been mixed. Uh, as the book says, mixed together, we use a small spatula, we could use an electric whisk. It doesn't really matter, you're not gonna create much aeration with these sorts of cakes. Um, now add the almond milk and eggs again. Don't start causing a racket. I've been sleeping all day and now I'm live of course Coco's now picked up a toy and trying to get RG to play like tug of war but it's like a bone toy it's like a soft cushiony toy it doesn't work as a tug of war thing how much arm milk am I using 60 mils So I first found a recipe similar to this online, um, but it used more eggs and it didn't have almond milk. And that was one of the switches I made when I first tried it because it tasted a bit too eggy for me. So I replaced one of the eggs for almond milk, along with playing with the flour quantities and the sweetener quantities. Um, and it, I just ended up with this, um, which is, in my opinion, not an eggy cake, which a lot of people complain about 
when you look at like keto recipes, especially if the cake is literally just eggs and almonds, same with like the breads that they do. Um, I just think it, it works a lot better and you, you get more of a flavour, especially from the lemon juice as well, right? I need to add the eggs now. Three eggs. That's very helpful, Sue. None. <laughs> Uh, I've made I'm doing Christmas pudding and also have a you lot. Oh, nice! See, I did think about that. The you log. That's one of the I think previous couple of Christmases. Last year, I did like a chocolate trifle thing, which was basically just the brownies, um, and then like a, uh, the ricotta mousse layered, and then I've also done a cheesecake in the past, and I've done a Yule log. But, I don't know, cheesecake's one of Louis' favourites, and also Dad really likes a, a, a caramel cheesecake, so I think I might sway towards that. Like the one that was that Dan posted on the page a couple of days ago, no, not a couple of days ago, no, it was a week ago. Um, it was a photo of Dad holding a plate of cheesecake and looking like he's about to take a bite out of it. That photo is like two years old, but <laughs> no one realised. <laughs> um... But you can tell because Dad's wearing his um, festival wristbands still. So I might make that again. It was like a, just a plain vanilla cheesecake and it had like a caramel swirl going through it. Hi, Gemma. Lemon cheesecake. See, um, if I'm going to have a cheesecake, I don't want it to be lemon. I think Dad would really like that. Louis would too, actually. Louis likes lemon stuff. But yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really fussed on lemon cheesecake. I'll eat it. But, you know. Um, right. Eggs, almond milk. So I've sort of mixed that together. There are a few lumps. Can you take them outside, please? Go outside. Oh, do you go outside? <laughs> it's, it's not quite raining, but it's miserable outside. Okay. He's suddenly calmed down now he realises he doesn't have to go out. Thank you. Okay, dry ingredients now. It, as I said, it's not fully mixed together, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Louis time. That's what the rack is. Now I add the remaining cake ingredients, which is basically, uh, I need the lemon juice in, I'll do that first, and then it's just dry stuff. So lemon juice, this isn't to give it a lemon flavour. I don't know, I can't describe what, what difference it makes, but it does make a difference. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe it takes the edge off a little bit, so it's not like, Sometimes people complain about the aftertaste of uh, sweetener. It's only 10 mils or two, two teaspoons. You can add more if you want to make this a lemon cake, it's fine. And maybe some lemon zest as well would work nicely. But just that little bit uh, makes a really big difference. But if you get to making this cake and you realise you don't have it, don't panic. It's not going to like affect the rise or anything. It's here for flavour, not for texture. Um, right, dry stuff. Now, oh no, I've forgot another thing, vanilla. Great if I read the recipe properly. I want to do all the liquids first, it just makes life easier. This is the stuff from the bakery. Um, a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm running, I'm running low on that. Huh? Right, now, that's all the dry stuff. Okay, nice with marmalade in the middle. Yeah, see, I never make the marmalade recipe. Apart from, I did it once when we had one random orange in the fridge from, uh, I think Dad was making like mince pie tests and we just had one random orange left. So I made it then. Um, other than that, it's not something I make. I make jam, I'd use jam in the middle. Okay, dry stuff. So, 130 grams of ground almonds. This is the bulk. You can, if you want to keep this nut free, I mean, first of all, you'd replace the almond milk with a alternative. So like coconut milk in the carton, not the tin, the carton, the watery stuff, um, normal milk, you can do that. Lactose free, whatever you want. Um, if you were gonna make this nut free and you wanted to replace the ground almonds, my recommendation would be to replace it with milled sunflower seeds. They are higher carb. Uh, but it's not really going to matter in a recipe like this where it's sort of diluted across the recipe. 
Um, I wouldn't go for things like milled linseed because it's more of a savoury taste, so I don't think it would work well in a cake. Right, 130 grams of almonds. Now, a lot of the cakes and bread things that I do, I like to do a combination of almond and coconut flour. Um, so I have 20 grams of coconut flour. Again, I think it helps with texture. Coconut flour thickens cake very, very easily, or any, any mix that you put it in, it thickens it very, very easily. Um, so it means that you don't end up having to use tons of ground almonds to thicken the cake. Do you think it would work with lupin flour? Honestly, I have no idea. I'm allergic to lupin, so I don't work with it. Um, and we haven't really had a chance to work with recipes with lupin yet. I mean, Dad's experimented with it previously. Sorry, um, a teaspoon of baking powder, about five grams. Dad's experimented with it previously um, in the short crust pastry recipe, which uses a tiny bit of coconut flour, again, to thicken it at the end. And he replaced it with an equal quantity of lupin. Um, and it did work. Obviously, I can't tell you what it did to the texture or anything like that. It looks a bit more yellow. Lupin smells off to me as well, but that's me. Um, so I don't know. It's, here's the long-winded answer. If you were going to replace any of the ingredients, I'd replace coconut flour with lupin. I wouldn't replace ground almonds, because Dad's done that previously in a, you know, like a bread recipe, and it's turned out like a brick. A very yellow brick as well. Right, mixing that all together, have I missed anything? Sweetener. You have missed something. Let me just let the dogs in because Coco's now sat out the door. Morning. Go straight upstairs. Right. Sweetener. So it's 30 grams of Truvia, Natvia, Puvia sweetener. Your standard stevia and erythritol or monk fruit and erythritol sweetener. Again, uh, <laughs> yeah, the tails. Argy's currently stood here, but yeah, Coco went straight through and upstairs to see Louis. Uh, sweetener, replace or add um, to your taste. Um, it, if you taste a mix and it tastes barely sweet enough, add more because you might lose some of it whilst you're baking. Um, oh gosh, maybe I'll sit back and wait for someone else to experiment first. So Rebecca, what do you want uh experimenting wise with lupin is it a cake that you want to make lupin with is it a bread because you know then i can maybe get that to do it on a live right that's the sweetener in giving it a mix it's quite a thick batter and it's it's very well mixed just with a spatula you mean as i said you can use a whisk if you want i just i get annoyed when all the mix ends up in the middle of the whisk and then you end up having to use a spatula anyway so there you go this is the kind of consistency gloopy i'd say right that's that part two is the cinnamon sort of blend so we'll do that now this is basically just cinnamon and sweetener or in my case i'm going to use mix mixed spice and sweetener because I prefer the sort of mixed spice flavour and again adjust to taste and don't worry I have checked this is mixed spice not caramel masala we have them in very similar jars and they're very similar powders I don't know why we did that to ourselves but you know live life on the edge um I'm just going to make up a little bit more than maybe necessary because I don't know how much I'm going to use across the different moulds if you've got any spare, I'll just add it to the, the granola topping uh, sweetener. So the layer, again, you're just a sweetener to taste. You could get rid of it entirely if you want. Um, it's a teaspoon of ground cinnamon or mixed spice to half a teaspoon of sweetener. So I did maybe two full spoons of that, one spoon of sweetener. Two to one ratio. Okay, so I'm going to preheat the Ninja Foodie. I'm going to use that rack. And it's going to take a while to cook all of these because I'm using these four 
but if we get four in and then i can prep the rest um and i'll post photos of when they're done so preheat the ninja what temperature what's up with you <laughs> why are you like that Fake. i think i'm going to need to put up 170 yeah, so it says preheat the oven to 180. With a Ninja Foodie, I usually reduce it by 10 degrees. Actually, I'll reduce it by 5 because they're very small. Oh. Okay. Right. So, sweetener mix, cake mix. Uh, last thing is granola mix. So, topping. I need melted butter first. So, it'll be the rest of this probably. This part's optional, you don't have to do it, you don't have to do the cinnamon layer part either, but then it's not really a layer cake, is it? Um, we're going to quickly melt that. This is going to help the sweetener uh, sort of stick, well, and the, and the uh, spice stick to the uh, almonds as well. I've got a mixed bag from Sainsbury's, so it has, let's have a look, uh, got Brazils, almonds, hazelnuts, cashews and walnuts. Basically when I'm looking at a mixed bag of nuts, um, I'll just make sure that there's no peanuts in it because it is allergic. Um, you can, normally I'll end up just buying a bag of like pecans, a bag of flaked almonds, a bag of blanched hazelnuts, those are my favourite combos. But this will work fine. <coughs> Meanwhile, we can start with the cake mix. So, regardless of whether you're using moulds or a tin, the first step is to fill the mould halfway with cake mix. I'm going to use one spoon. I'm going to try and get it in the corners. It's kind of a bit too much. I need to get a smaller spoon. Butter's melted. How much? So 25 grams of butter, 100 grams of mixed nuts. I'm not going to be picky. You can chop these down further if you want. I always prefer, especially almonds and hazelnuts, I prefer to use them without the skins on. But it doesn't really matter in this case because they're going to get baked on top. So they're going to roast essentially on top of the cake. Um, other additions is spice. So again, cinnamon or mixed spice and a little bit of sweetener. Again, this is to taste. Uh, how much does it say? A teaspoon of ground cinnamon and half a teaspoon of sweetener. I know I'm using this spoon to add the mix, the cake mix in as well, but it doesn't really matter. So they've got a nice bronze colour from the spice. Yeah, so Karen, we'll see how these moulds go. As I said, I don't know how well it's going to work, um, just because I don't know whether it's going to sort of be a bit too crumbly, but we'll see. So again, halfway in each mould. That snowman one probably has the best chance. The star is a bit too detailed, I think, maybe. But I said, I'm going to... I've got... I've cut the tray into two. So I'm going to do one, as I normally do cakes, which is just once they're out the oven, just leave them to rest out on the side um, for a little while. The other one I'll put in the freezer until, not until they're frozen, but until they're kind of solidifying a bit more. 
um, and then maybe they'd hold their shape a bit better. So I'm just trying to guesstimate where halfway is and push them into the corners. So the only problem with um, cutting the mould is that they do kind of fall a little bit, but <laughs> it's fine. Right, take a smaller bit of your spice mix and so that you don't end up dumping like large rice of spice in one area, tap the spoon gently and you'll get a more even distribution. Also, the higher up you do it, the, the better it would be. But with these moulds, they don't want to waste loads of spice on the outside. So, I have no idea how these are going to turn out. They might be too small to sort of have like that distinct layer. The cake, when you do it as a normal cake size, um, you get a really distinctive layer. Yeah, the whole mould would fit in the grill soon, um, but the grill needs cleaning. So I'm improvising. We did, we roasted, uh, what did we roast yesterday? That did the ribs in there yesterday, I think. So I needed, I need to scrape out the whole pan. I, I, I couldn't be able to do that 10 minutes before live. So I cut the mold. <laughs> I've done that with most of the molds because the, the foodie is just very convenient. All right. So cinnamon layer. Want to be careful with the second layer because you don't want to like smear the spice so that I just wanted to tap the cake mix off, that wouldn't work. You just want to gently like create blobs and then you can smooth it out. Just try and keep that layer of spice distinct. Right, there's the snowman. This star is annoying. I'm trying to get it into the corners. This cake doesn't rise an awful lot. So you can basically use the midpoint of your mold as the midpoint for the cake. Um, it's fine. And if they rise over a bit, it's, it'd be fine. Because they've got the granola on top as well, it's gonna sort of weigh the cake down a little bit more than normal. get loads out of this. I've got loads of mix left. Right. <laughs> the grill is handy. I'll give it that. Um, I think I need a new spoon because I've used that. Okay. Last bit, and then we can get these in the foodie, and we'll just make the other cakes. So, granola mix. Um, I'm not gonna be able to fit much in these molds. <laughs> Three hazelnuts. Okay, if you had chopped nuts, you'd you'd be able to get more onto each one. Oh, I should have. Damn it! I should have made the snowman. No, it's fine. They're too big anyway. I could have made like buttons on the snowman. I'm making sure to get a bit of the, like the spiced butter mix at the bottom of the bowl as well. There we go. There you are. So that's going to go in the foodie. Uh, for about, I mean, this is where it's experimenting because I don't know how well these moulds are going to bake it. So. We'll see. If it's a full cake in a metal tin, it says 30 to 35 minutes. So we'll give them maybe 15 to start. They are pretty small. I'll do 15. 
16, and we'll see how they are. Yeah, so Karen, I think, yeah, it was your post, wasn't it, that gave, that gave us the idea of this sort of layer. And you did a swirl, didn't you? I can't bother that. But it did look very cool. And it was made in a loaf tin, and it obviously makes a really good slice, doesn't it? Um, right, let's do the other four moulds, and then we'll see how much mix we have for a cake. I use a brownie tin now for my cakes, just bits of the grill. Yeah, yeah. The grill is a perfect size for like tray bake style things. The foodies are perfect size for some of the spring form cake tins we have as well. See, this one should be good. This is a stocking. So it's got no random points. Oh, this one is even better. A holly wreath. I'm going to put loads of cake in this. Even the mix feels quite light and fluffy, if that makes sense. If you haven't tried this cake, I really do recommend it, especially if you've not had much success with the other cakes. You know, if you found them a bit too eggy or whatever. Add a little bit of spice to it. This one's really dodgy. I'm determined to try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really awkward. It's a candy cane. Right. Go halfway. When you're doing the layer, you almost want to do it so that you can't see the cake mix underneath anymore. So, there you go. That will give you a nice distinctive line of spice. This gingerbread man's really annoying to try and get the hands and feet. Okay. Potentially, you'll be able to see the result of the first lot come out of foodie Karen so because as I said silicon sometimes isn't the best at baking things like cakes because it doesn't conduct heat very well you'll notice it when you take it out of the oven within a few seconds it's just warm it's not like a metal tin um that can mean that it doesn't bake the cake very well underneath um, the worst ones I've had are actually the Ninja Foodie brand or any of those circular ones. You know, it's like a tray and it's got uh, maybe seven cake, circular cake moulds in like a, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Something that you've got a handle in it so you can pull it out. Uh, but the silicon was so thick, the cake was fully cooked on top and raw at the base because it just wouldn't conduct heat very well. I've put that tray on the Ninja Pizza tray, so it also has holes in the bottom to sort of help the airflow as well. Right. <laughs> this candy cane is so annoying. It would look very cool if it actually works though. I think that wreath one might be the first one I tried to pop out because it's obviously it's very simple. The star would be the hardest, I think, because of the points. Right, granola mix. Little bit of the spiced butter as well on each one. <laughs> it's got a hazelnut on his brain. Right, a whole walnut's not going to fit on that, so we'll go for the random odds and ends. Oh, an almond would work. Yeah, there we go. Right, the nuts, just press them in gently. The cake will grow around them anyway. 
fine. There we go. So I'll leave those to one side. They'll they'll go in next, maybe. Um, final thing. To use up the rest of the mix. See, it says it makes ten portions. I've got eight mini cakes out of this, and also a decent amount of mix left over to use um, in this little mini cake tin. So it gets quite a lot. Yeah, I'm going to cut that. I don't think this needs lining, but I'll do it anyway because I want to make it nice and neat. Because if those fail, I'll post about this one and we'll just all pretend that I never tried the moulds. That I just purposefully went live to make a tiny cake. Okay. As with all things that are baking the ninjas, I uh, make sure that there's not a load of grease proof sort of hanging around the sides. It's just going to blow over and make the cake not bake very evenly. So just trim it back if you've got excess. Okay, so I'll use half of this mix in the base. I don't think I've got quite enough mix to make like a full cake in here, but we'll do what we can. In fact, because I've not got a lot of mix left, I'll do it all in one go. So I'm not going to make the layer, I'm just going to dust it with all the remaining cinnamon on top. I could have put the, the cinnamon on the bottom actually, that would have worked nicely. Too late for that now. So it's kind of halfway full. There we go. Right, let's add these first. There you go. I mean, you can kind of see it's not not a full size cake, but it will do. I think it's going to be half granola <laughs> in the amount that's left over. You could, if you if you know, don't want to skip the, the cake part, if you're just here for ideas, just bake that and you've got cinnamon spiced granola. That would work really nicely. It's what we do at the bakery. Louis' portion, yeah. <laughs> Okay, granola in there, I've sort of pressed it down to sort of push the cake up a bit more. And even more spam, oh, go away, bear with me. We have a spammer, we've not had one of them in a while. Block uh, user. It is very satisfying. Okay. I'm just going to use the rest of this up now. Dad would like this. He just likes more and more and more cinnamon, more spice. Why not? <laughs> it's literally covered. There you go. So, partially cooked, or partially filled uh, cake mould, um, and then the rest of the granola and then all of the remaining cinnamon or mixed spice dust on top. So that'll get baked as well. That'll take the longest out of everything, obviously, because it's a larger cake. I'd probably say that's 20 to 25 minutes. Um, obviously, it's a little bit harder to tell because you can't see the top of the cake as you normally would because uh, it's covered in granola and stuff. But um, instead of doing the knife trick, um, this is quite a dense cake, so it might not give you the results you want. You might end up overcooking it because you get crumbs stuck to your knife still. 
um, just try and make sure that it's not like wobbly at all. As long as it's not wobbly and the outside you can kind of press down and there's no sort of, um, it's got a bit of like a firmness to it, you're fine. Um, if it starts to sink, then pop it in front of the five minutes. But, you know, it's a heavy cake. A, it's, you know, it's a keto cake. They're not going to rise as well as normal ones. But you're also weighing it down with the granola on top. So don't worry if it just seems a bit dense. And if you do the knife trick, you know, stick it in the middle, you might end up with mix still stuck to it. As long as it's not literally like raw cake mix. If you get a few specks of um, crumbs, it's fine. Um, right. It does smell great, but I don't know how long. Ooh. Okay, they're not done. So let me get these out so I can show you. Can I move? Yeah. So these aren't done yet. So I will take photos. You see how well they've risen in there. So the colour is great, but um, you can see there's a little bit of like squishiness to the middle still. So I reckon another five minutes and they should be good. Um, they seem to be doing all right in terms of silicon mold. They're sort of pulling away from the sides, which is a good sign because it means it's sort of starting to bake fully. So I'm going to pop them back in another five minutes. Uh, and then they'll need to cool in the mold, I'd say for at least 15, 20 minutes um, before I attempt to try and get them out. And then I'll sort of see what they're like if they if they're acting a bit too fragile, or if the first one breaks in half as it's coming out, I'll pop them in the freezer, um, and then let them sort of solidify in there before trying to get them out of the molds. And then that's probably the best way to make sure I still get that sort of shape. Because I want to see a snowman feature on the cake. I think that's quite nice. I'm not going through all that effort <laughs> for them to end up as blobs. I'm not doing that. But it does show that I could probably have got away with a little bit less mix in them because they did rise. They have risen like that much over the edge of the mould. So that's good to know. I could have made a larger cake in the smaller tip. Um, but I'll let you know how they get on. I'll post about them on the page in the group for later. Um, and yeah, those <laughs> snowflake emoji or snowman emoji. And those uh, moulds along with these little chocolate moulds, I used them on the, the gingerbread house live a couple of weeks ago, um, they're from Lidl as far as I'm aware, um, they might still be there obviously in the middle aisle, um, you can, I'm sure you can find lots of others on Amazon as well, but they look like they're a good thickness where they're not too thick that they just don't bake the cake properly, and they also do the big tray ones, like A4 size for a full sort of, it was like a Christmas tree that I didn't get, but it would look quite cool. But I have no reason to bake a giant Christmas tree cake, so I didn't get it. All right, uh, thank you very much for watching. Apologies for the missing lives last week. Um, neither me or dad were very well, so we just postponed the two. Um, lives this week, obviously, uh, it's Christmas later on, so um, there aren't any lives toward the end of the week. But, obviously me today. Wednesday, dad's making two Christmas sides. So he's doing sprout, gratin and Yorkshire puddings. And then on Thursday, we are doing our usual Q&A that we had pushed back. We were going to do it last Friday, so we've pushed it to next Thursday uh, at 6.45. So it's 15 minutes later than normal. But that'll be the last live before Christmas. And then I'll figure out what we're doing next week, which will be a bit all over the place because there's Christmas and New Year's. So um, our Karen's got the Christmas tree. Got to try and make a Christmas tree cake now. I want to see how it works out. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'll post photos when I'm done and I will see you on Wednesday. Goodbye.